Thank you. I'm very well, thank you. You're a lady who knows what you want and how to get it, and you speak your mind. I think for some people, when you first came out and hit the big time, that was shocking, that a woman could actually have a mind of her own. Yeah, I think so. It's funny, actually, because I was discussing this with friends the other day, and we were talking about the whole Ladette era. And I went through probably about a good five years of battling that title and going, you know, I was never a Ladette, I was never a Ladette. Actually, now I'm quite proud of it, because I'm a bit older and I'm a mum and I'm married and I've settled down. I think, do you know what? We actually, myself, Zoe Ball, Sarah Cox, Gail Porter, we were all very outspoken, opinionated women. And at that time, I think we have a lot to be proud of. Because we fought for our place and we had our own TV shows and, you know, we were able to establish ourselves in our chosen careers and, you know, have good careers. So, yeah, I'm actually proud now. I think from a guy's point of view, watching you was always fun. But from a media perception point of view, I never thought that you were this, the woman who could stand on stage and blow us away with a big belter um, or act or sing or do anything else. Because it was all about the gobbiness and, and being funny. Do you think that kind of set you back in a way? I do think, yeah, it did in the early days. And actually, you know, it still does haunt me sometimes. There were some antics of mine that um, (laughs) meant that I wasn't bankable for sort of the primetime shows. For instance, you know, pinching an ashtray from Buckingham Palace probably wasn't the wisest move in my (laughs) career. Or flashing Prince Charles in a flesh-coloured bra. (laughs) Um, But these are just things that when, you know, when I'm a bit of a daredevil and people would dare me to do something and I'd just go ahead and do it and not think about the consequences. But it means I've had to kind of try and prove myself a little bit more. I've trained. I've had training. I've trained since I was a kid. And, of course, it wasn't just the West End with Chicago. You went over to Broadway to do it and you knocked them dead there. I think that was the moment when people took you seriously because if you can make it over there, you can literally make it anywhere. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, it changed people's perception of me. And I think then coming back, I worked with Andrew Lloyd Webber on Tell Me On A Sunday. And especially in this country, that was the real turning point. Um... to to do a one-woman show in the West End because it's not easy to do. And I think also, I don't even really think I always give myself enough credit for how brave it was to do that because it is really scary. Um, You know, to to hold a show on your own is probably the hardest thing you can ever do. And actually, I don't know if I'd be quite so brave now. So it's funny how you change as you get older. (laughs) It's an amazing show, that. And what was bigger than just you standing on stage by yourself, which in itself is freaky, the fact that you had to sing all the way through, what kind of pressure goes through your head before you go on that you've got to be there, you've got to perform, your name's on the front of the theatre, and if you're not there, there isn't a show? Well, that's it. That's the pressure. And you do think, if you know, if I'm not there, there isn't a show, and uh, you just have to get on with it. And it was almost, um, again, I felt like I had a point to prove. I just always feel like I've got to prove something, which I think most people in this business feel like that. You know, it's if it's not um, on a personal level, then there's something like, you know, even coming into this show, I came in as a takeover and the cast are already established and you sort of, you have a point to prove there because you want to go, look, I can do it. I can do it just as well. And so, yeah, I think um, that's probably what drives me. You've been there a million times when they pick up on something you've said and make something out of it. Mm. Does that feeling ever leave you, the older you get or the more experienced you are, that, oh, God, it's coming, it's coming, and I know they're going to get me? No, it never leaves you. If you're anything like me, I get, I'm so, I've, I feel genuinely very comfortable on camera or doing chats like this. I'm not thinking that it's going out to millions of people. And sometimes, I, well, most of the time I chat to people as though I would talk to my friends and say the things that I would say, um, you know, in the privacy of my own home. And it's not always wise. Mm. So we've covered theatre. Of course, radio's been a big part of your life. You left well, one building. That, it wasn't that big. It was six months big. <laughs> no, but in breakfast, that's a oh. lifetime. And also getting up. I want to talk to you about that feeling when the alarm goes off at 4am in the morning. That's annoying, isn't it? Hell, it's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> I've got to be honest. And the thing is, I kind of underestimated how awful you feel for the rest of the day. You know, some people can work those hours and work like Johnny who was my co-host and do it for years and enjoy it and it kind of works with their lifestyle but it really wasn't working for me because I had to get up so early at four o'clock plus I was doing television shows during the day I was getting to bed about 10 o'clock at night and then not forgetting I just started dating Lee who was in a West End show he was coming home at 11 o'clock at night you know it's so hard to switch off after doing a a show a theatre show that we, I was probably averaging about three hours sleep a night, and after six months of doing that every day, I was just exhausted. I felt that it wasn't a place for me in that show as well, so that was another reason. 
And in terms of your relationship that you just mentioned, everybody was so happy for you. You'd made a big thing about the fact that you couldn't find the right guy. And that was clever as well because the media bought into it. And then you did. And we're all happy with this fairy tale life that you've got. Who's looking after the baby now, though? Because if you're here and he's on stage at Wicked... Oh, who's he's looking... not. He's off this week. Ah, ah all right. He's on what about next week when he's back? Uh, we have... <laughs> my mum does half the week and we have a nanny who does half the week. So, And I don't do the Thursday matinee on this show. So I'm home all day, Monday to Friday, I'm home all day till 5.30. What's amazing, I spoke to him about two years ago at Joseph and there was probably three or four hundred women literally waiting out the stage door. And they love him in his underpants. Now, why can they get away with it and you can't? Right, exactly. It's the thought of me and my underpants compared to him. Is it hard (laughs) being in a relationship with somebody who's a sex symbol? You wouldn't have that problem with me. (laughs) I'm married, easy tiger. (laughs) No, I think it's very flattering. It's, It's nice to wake up to. (laughs) <laughs> is it tough balancing the work, the showbiz and the private life as well? Because normal life is hard enough without all of this stuff on top. Um, do you know what? We've, we've managed to find a really good balance and it works really well. And we have a rule. We don't talk about work at home. And we introduced this rule probably about three or four months ago when there were lots of things in the press. And, you know, you end up reading things and I'd come home and I'd say, why did you say this about me? Or why did you tell them that? And he'd do the same. We, you know that most of it's not real. Um, so we decided just never to discuss it. So we have, you know, we've got a baby now, so we've got more important things to talk about than talk about showbiz. Does he put it all into perspective? I mean, you're sat here now about to entertain the West End with this great show, Legally Blonde. And me, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to be in tonight. It really doesn't matter, though, does it? Because you've got a baby to feed. Yeah, I mean, I love what I do, and I take it very seriously, but it is nice to now go home and switch off from work. It's lovely. I now get when friends have said to me before, you know, it just it gives your life a real sense of purpose. And it's it's good because, you know, I used to live just my work and I was driven and ambitious. And I think I I kind of, well, I'm older now, so I needed something else to channel that energy into. I've got a lovely baby girl to focus on. And that feeling of loving something more than you love yourself or anybody else in the entire world. What's that like? It's the best feeling in the world. It's also frightening because... um, (laughs) You know, now I'm full of worry as well. I'm one of the, I'm a worrying mum and a guilty mum. You always feel guilty about everything. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's the best feeling. And you're, of course, now in this show starring in Legally Blonde. And what a show it is. It's uplifting and fun. And God, do we need that right now? We do. And I think that is the secret to its success in the West End. There are very few shows where you walk out and you just you, you beam in with a big smile on your face. The songs are infectious. It's colourful and it's everything you want from a musical. It does what it says on the tin. Um, And that's why I wanted to do it, because I came to see this show. It's been running now for just over a year. I came on the press night when it first opened and I was quite heavily pregnant at the time. And I wanted to jump up and just join in the dance numbers. But I had to wait my time and this is my time. (laughs) Um, So it's nice. It's nice to join a show that people love. And you know that at the end of the, the performance, 90% of the time people are on their feet cheering at the end and of course Sheridan Smith who plays Elle Woods is incredible really incredible and I said when uh, the producers asked me to come in and talk about taking over this role I insisted that I would only do it if Sheridan was here because I wanted to work with her and I'm so pleased I've had the chance to do that It's a tough gig because she does have to carry it and a bit like you and Tell Me on a Sunday I mean relentless through the whole show Mm -hmm. How tired are you at the end of this? I'm not too tired. Um, I'm tired because I'm up through the night with my baby. (laughs) So I go into Sheridan's dressing room and she's complaining because she's tired from the show. And I'm like, but honey, you haven't changed four nappies through the night. (laughs) You've got nothing to complain about. Um, But no, my part's a nice part. I'm not on really for the first 15, 20 minutes, which means I can sit and catch up on emails and call friends because I never get time to do it at home with a baby. And then I've got some great solo numbers. You'll see, it's it's a nice, fun part, and I can experiment with the part a little bit every night, which is great. And you've got the best actors in the world in terms of the dogs. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. They're quite smelly, though. Are they? Yeah. And they dribble all over me. It's quite funny, because my ball... One of the dogs in it, my dog, Rufus, is a bulldog, and he's quite heavy, and he's really slobbery, and he's lovely, but I walk up, and the first thing I do is go straight to the hand sanitizer and wash in my hands, because he's absolutely stinking. 
<laughs> you never know what they're going to do next. I mean, the rules of show business are don't work with dogs and animals. Yeah, but the same applies to some of our cars movies. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what they're going to do. <laughs> hey, listen, Denise, a real pleasure talking to you. And I know you've had a tough day as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. And we all love you it's very much. It's only been tough because I'm talking to you. I know. I'm going to be joking. nicer next time and I'll be better. <laughs> You're and, lovely. And we'll both have less to whinge about next yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> and don't speak out of turn. Don't say things that are going to get you in trouble. Do you think I'm going to be on air on Monday morning? Yeah, we need more people like you. It makes it fun. <laughs> Who wants a boring life? You've certainly not got one of those. Hey, Denise, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Enjoy the show.